Hi everyone, I wanted to share with you some great news. I received a new job offer at a company here in Austin, Texas. I wanted to give you some insight into my job search process as well as helping you stay motivated and aiding you in your own search. So basically to preface the situation, I came back from Mexico in late November looking for a new role as a front end or full stack developer. And my previous history was that I was working at a commercial real estate startup for about eight months or so. And so that's what I'm kind of walking into the situation with. November and December was kind of slow due to the holiday season, Thanksgiving, Christmas and New Year's. So basically, I didn't really start seriously start searching until January. Um, during November, December, I still applied to some jobs, went to a couple events, but nothing was eventful. In January, I basically had this daily process that I went through and I knew that people were coming back from the holidays as well as companies having a new fiscal year so they're able to bring on uh, new developers. And my daily process consisted of uh, applying to three to five jobs in the morning and then midday I would code and work on projects and in the evening I would go to some kind of networking or company event just to meet people. My job online job search was basically going on LinkedIn, going on AngelList and a couple of other companies which I'll link for you so you can use them as well. And I just try to reach out to a real person. I put in a lot of applications. I think I tagged about 50 applications in my little uh, journal here and that was the online search the meetup aspect was basically just getting business cards flyers connecting with people on LinkedIn uh, at, at the event itself so that I can chat with them later since you don't have too much time to talk when you're there and what I, I don't know if you know this feature, but there's also uh, a find nearby or a scan QR code feature on LinkedIn that you can quickly connect with people so you don't have to search for them, you know, um, and then add them in that way. And that was basically uh, what I had done uh, during my job search process here and what I was going through. Um, next up, I'd like to talk about the job interview process specifically at this company. I think I found this company on LinkedIn at the time and the whole process took from about January 29th until February 21st, which was when I signed the contract to work with them. And it consisted of two phone interviews, uh, one assessment that's not this non-technical. It was just a logic and uh, general competency and then also going to an on-site so maybe about four different steps and i basically found them on linkedin i sent a message to the in-house recruiter and i said this is kind of my history and i'm interested in your company and i wanted to connect with a real person i didn't want to get hit by this uh, filter or wall that companies have <laughs> most of the time and so we we got connected uh, via email and then we set up a phone call, um, just an initial phone screen, learning more about the company, looking at my personality, uh, communication skills, and just what I'm looking for generally. So I got a chance to learn more about them and I asked very surface level questions, things like, um, you know, what role am I signing up? as you know what's was the company do um kind of just uh very surface level things and so everything went well and he said he would take me to the next step which was basically interviewing with one of the senior engineers so this is the second interview now uh, phone interview where i hopped on with the senior web applications uh developer um and this was a chance where I got to ask more technical questions because he was actually on the uh, software engineering team. And so I got a chance to ask more deeper questions like, uh, what's the onboarding process look like? What was the company uh, 
expecting uh, in terms of scaling for the coming year, uh, the onboarding process, um, technologies I'll be working with, um, kind of you know more more role directed questions. And I really liked this interviewer because he was very sincere. He offered uh, an honest opinion about the company. He wasn't trying to hide as much of the bad things. And then also, he didn't come from a CS background, so that kind of put me at ease. Um, he went through the whole process of coming in as an intern and then ending up as a manager in this company. So he had a lot of experience at this company, um, and he shared that with me. So I really do appreciate that. And then the third third step in this process was a just an assessment. The first part was more of a logic, and then there was a reading component, and then a mathematical component. All of this was doable if you had a high school education or you know how to do uh, general competency stuff, um, you could pass. And basically that afternoon, I finished the. Um, assessment they emailed me and said hey we want to set up an interview and so the following week was when i went into this on-site interview with three people um one was a vp of uh i think of technology the other guy was the the senior web engineer that i had talked to on the phone and then another more junior engineer on the team and so I also had to do a whiteboard, which was basically working with arrays, uh, summing up all the values, and then also uh, dealing with some edge cases. So some companies, I, some things I also asked them was like, uh, some, what are some opportunities for vertical and lateral growth? Uh, what's the learning culture like? What's the formal code review process like? Um, how does the company invest in the developer um, to help them grow just that sort of thing and so after the on-site interview that afternoon um, so I interviewed at around 9 or 10 a.m. I got an offer by phone around 3 or 4 p.m. and I told them that I needed some time to talk over with my family and friends and so I would let them know uh, pretty soon. And I'll go into more of the dilemma that I face at that time here. Um, but next up, I just like to go over kind of what I found that I liked about the company. And maybe these are values that you can look for in your next role. Some things I was looking for in a company was just basic uh, work-life balance, good benefits, um, and then the people that I work with are, are, are cool. Uh, so this company is basically a global company. It has about 50 to 200 employees and they work with, uh, sales management, uh, sales performance management solutions, meaning they build out little solutions for different companies and to help them with their own business. What I liked about this company was that it's very laid back. They have a uh, physical exercise component where they they value health, and that's always been a value that I hold uh, very highly. And so they do have that aspect. They have that work-life balance, which is important for me. I don't want to burn out like I did before in my medical career. And just some of the things that they offer in terms of benefits was really cool. Um, they offer some kind of remote work at home, which I really like. Uh, gives me a break from having to constantly deal with people as I am an introvert. Um, offer the standard uh, health health plans. Um, there's a 401k, there's a cell phone allowance, and it's a new office as well. I went to their office and I liked everything. And I think the biggest thing from this role is the potential to learn uh, a whole slew of different technologies because you're not really just building one app, you're building solutions. So you're being exposed to all these different technologies at once. And it really goes to say that you really might learn, you'll learn something new every day. So that's kind of some of the reasons that I chose this company. Even though the salary wasn't that great, um, I feel that all these other benefits and values were 
pretty important and and it's another stepping stone for me eventually leading to that perhaps remote role that i want uh, a couple years down the line so next up i'll talk about the little dilemma that i had the time frame for this whole process was really tight and this is kind of where my dilemma came in basically i was given a a phone offer that wednesday I was supposed to have an on-site interview with a huge company. Like if I told you the name, you would definitely know it. And it was going to be an on-site. They offer a contract position for 12 months. But I think um, versus this first company where it's more of a salary position, I think you really can't go wrong with either, to be honest. And I was discussing this with my close friend and family just to kind of weigh the the benefits of each. Basically, got the offer. I had an on-site schedule for Thursday. I was going away for that weekend, so it's you know I didn't have much time to prepare for things, for interviews and all that stuff. Basically, um, my my close uh, my my family member told me that you know just go to the interview on-site interview with the second company see how it turns out and see if they can make you an offer quickly because you are you are getting an offer from the first company and i said okay that's cool you know thursday rolls around friday rolls around still no on-site i even got pushed back to having a phone interview um before the weekend and then coming into an on-site the following week which still uh, I thought at the time fits, but it didn't because I was still away coming and I wasn't going to be back until Tuesday, which was when I had told the first company that I'll give them my answer. So long story short, just to make everyone happy, I think I just decided to take the first job offer, even though um, it, it, it didn't work out. Basically, I just took the job offer for what it was and decided just to get it all off the table before the weekend so that I can have a good time at the uh, the snow resort where I went snowboarding. And yeah, so I basically signed on on that Friday knowing that, you know, I didn't have another shot at this huge company, this huge second company. And I was kind of uh, disappointed that things didn't work out, but I still landed a job nonetheless. And I think the, the, the weight factors that I consider was basically the full-time salary versus the contract position, whereas one was a smaller company, the other one was a more well-known uh, as a contract company, contract position. And both gets benefits, both are great locations. And I think I would have learned a lot from both as well. Um, so it was really a difficult choice. That was that was my dilemma. But I think at the end of the day, you're going to have these situations where you'll interview with multiple companies and you'll just have to kind of work really tightly on a tight schedule because you have these on-sites, you have these assessments, and then you're getting these offers, you have to negotiate and all this back and forth. So it's just a part of the process. But that was the dilemma I was kind of facing Um I know that it might be confusing in terms of the time frame, but just know that I was facing a crunch time situation, basically. And then last up, I just wanted to talk about some general job search advice and motivation for you, as I think it will be helpful. Um, yeah, so at this point, that concludes my my second developer job offer uh, situation. And then the rest of this is just going to be more uh, general advice. I'm going to give you just three general tips that I found useful during my process. And then I'll also include, include links in the bottom that I think would be helpful for you. My first tip for you is to basically copy and paste the job description and benefits. The thing about this is that when you come to the point of negotiation, they might have taken the position down. So you don't know exactly or maybe have forgotten what they were offering or what you're going to be doing. Um, so it's always helpful to copy that down. So when you get to the negotiation point, you can have 
things that you can move around and that sort of stuff. So really, I recommend, highly recommend copy pasting from that LinkedIn job posting or that angel list posting, whatever it is, just copy and paste it down. It does takes two seconds and you can use it later uh, during the latter phases. My second uh, advice to you, piece of advice is to keep track of everything. So I have a markdown document in VS Code that I'll keep track of the dates of things that happen and what I had sent out in terms of the message and then also kind of notes that I took down during the interview, that sort of thing. And this is immensely helpful because when you look at other companies and you look at this company, they're both on paper essentially, right? So you can kind of look them side by side. In VS Code, you can do that split screen option. So you can kind of just scroll through and be like, oh, okay, this company is has this, this company has that. So it's a lot more easier for yourself. And there's also apps, obviously, that can do this. Uh, one popular one is called the Hunter app, which my school uses. I didn't really like that as much because everything was abstracted away in different forms and different view, uh, view screens. I like having everything out laid out, right? So that's why I do this markdown thing. And Hunter, I think there's a subscription model if you are a lone user. My school offered it to me for unlimited usage. So um, I use it for a time, but I didn't really like it. But the second piece of advice is just to keep track of everything. And my last piece of advice is just to do your research, right? So when it comes to things like salary negotiation, I looked at the national average for that job title, which is basically web applications developer. And then I also looked at the salary for my area. So this gives you some talking point as well. And, you know, research about the company, figure out what you like about it. And even though it's your first developer job, you might not know the kind of values you're looking for yet. Um, but I think at the end of the day, the important thing is like, how much work are you doing for the amount that you're getting paid? Right. That's the baseline. Like if you can figure that out, then you're pretty good. Like, um, and then of course the benefits and maybe personal values. Like if you have a family, you want more time with them, work life balance, that sort of thing. So try to figure that out. Um, at least, um, going back to doing your research. I was offered, I was lowballed basically. I was lowballed 10K below the national average. And I basically said nicely to them, hey, I was expecting more of, uh, you know, closer to this range. Can you find it in your budget to increase the salary for me? Because I do have plans of settling here. Like, literally, I said I was going to look at real estate here and I wanted um, money to invest in, right? And I also have my Lambda School loan, so um, any little bit helps. Um, so I said it in a nice way, just basically said, can you find in your budget to uh, increase my salary? And they were able to bump it up, but not by too much. However, they said there was an evaluation, um, two evaluations later in the year. So that would give me an opportunity to increase my salary as well. So do your research, know what you're getting into, Take your time with these companies. Don't just blow through them like, you know, uh, the dating process or whatever, or like the shotgun approach. Take your time with them, um, especially the ones that do matter to you, because at the end of the day, it really does help if you build a relationship with them. And those are kind of my three tips um, as I learned through this process. I have a bunch more, which I'll probably have to make a separate video for. But I hope you learn a lot through this uh, experience of mine. And please, if you have any questions or any comments, um, reach out to me, post them in the comments. And I hope this has been immensely helpful for you. And I'm super excited about my second developer job. Um, it's one step closer to the remote lifestyle. And I'm really excited for that. Thanks so much for watching. And I hope you have a great day, great weekend, great week, wherever you are. If you enjoyed the music on this video, please feel free to support my friend. He 
lets me use his music free of charge and he's has a couple tracks here and he's always making new ones and he also has an instagram page and also a website so please show him some love like his tracks and please feel free to share it and i thank him so much for letting us uh, share his music with us